Hey, what's up everybody? Mark McKinnon here. And today I'm starting off a new series about creating a character in Bassam 4th Edition. So the book's on the shelves now and it's available to all Kickstarter packers. So I want to go over a little bit about how to create a character by walking through the steps in the book. And I'm going to be referring to the book as we go. Uh, and so we're going to jump right off with the first part of character creation, and that is session zero. So this is chapter two, where it talks about how to create a character. And the very beginning of it really involves that first session, where all the players and the game master are going to sit down and discuss the upcoming game. Because you really can't jump in and create a character until you know the parameters that you're working from. And so we talk a little bit about scoping the game and where it's going to be set. The GM and the players can collectively decide what type of game is it going to be. So is it set in the anime multiverse, perhaps one of the, the six prime worlds? Or is it based on an existing anime setting? What sort of setting materials are going to be there? Is it going to be a lot of material made up on the fly? Or is it going to be, say, real world setting? In which case, you know, a computer and a Google uh, search will get you most of the information on that. One of the things that we really encourage in Bessem is collective creation. So unlike the old way a lot of people used to create their characters, they go home, they, they get out their books, they write down all the character information, and then they show up to the session with their character. A far better and more a rich way of creating characters actually to have all the players creating the characters at the same time. Because that way you're going to be able to understand what the other characters are doing, create connections between the different characters, and then also make sure that every character has that thing that they shine in. So you don't have two characters showing up with a very similar character concept. A great example of something that I ran a game where it was a spaceship game um, where, think of it like a Firefly or Cowboy Bebop, where all the players were part of a crew of a space freighter that goes from sector to sector within the cathedral setting of the prime world, and they would pick up odd jobs here and there, deliver cargo, uh, and of course get into adventures and troubles. So by having all the players stick together and come up with the roles, we got to determine who was going to be the captain, who was going to be in security, who was going to be tech or engineer. Um, was there anyone in that, that was like a bruiser? And so if one person was going to be the fighting guy, then maybe a different character would take a slightly different route on that, a doctor, for example. And the collective creation really was the best way to do it. And that was all set up during session zero. So certainly encourage you all to get together, first of all, to create the characters collectively. In this section, we talk about power levels. And this is something that obviously the GM will, will have kind of their preference in mind, but the player should really help the GM determine what the power level of the campaign should be. And on table one, we talk about the different power levels that run from subhuman, which is zero to 24 character points, all the way up to godlike 250 points and above. And so these power ranges of the points, even if you don't understand anything about what points are right now, you don't understand anything about Bessem, your first time to it, you can look at the descriptions we provide and say, well, what type of adventure type game that we're looking at having? And we suggest probably running in the, the adventure or the heroic level. So you're looking at between 50 and say 99 or roughly 100 points. And that range will give the characters a lot of freedom of powers and selection, but it's not going to be such a high level that's maybe someone new to it would have more difficulty getting to it. So if you don't have anything in mind, if you really don't know what you're looking for, we recommend between 50 and 100 points is kind of the, the sweet spot for most Bessem games. You can go higher or lower, of course. So that power level, once that's set, then you can start really getting into understanding a little bit more about the character creation. And again, even if you don't know anything about stats or attributes or defects, that is the first step to understanding where you're going to be going next. One of the things that we do talk about are character benchmarks uh, in this chapter. And it's not something you're going to need to worry yourself right now. But character benchmarks are just a way of making sure that none of the players are going to be outside the realm of normal. So if everyone kind of has attributes in the, the range of two or three, and someone comes in and says they want a six attribute, well, based on what's in table two, you may find that that, that really doesn't kind of fit within the benchmarks that we're looking for for this particular campaign and this power level. So it's okay to restrict character ideas if it's going to cause some sort of unbalancing. And that's what the benchmarks are going to set up for you. We also talk about social sensitivity in this section. And this is really important, especially with uh, a group creation, that players have to be careful and comfortable with the, what's going to come up in the game. So we outline several different things you're going to want to discuss uh, in there to make sure that 
everyone's on board and understand what parameters are going to be happening during the game. Everyone's going to be at their comfort level because you don't want one person uncomfortable and the rest of the game not. So we talk a little bit about that. And then we got on to the character's framework. And so this is where, while collectively you're going to be discussing things, you also need to understand individually about your character. So are you human? Um, what are some of your strengths and weaknesses? And what are some of the background details? And really good about the collective creation is you can actually have several players getting together and collectively deciding on the background details. So that's a great way to have maybe uh, twins or people that maybe they served in the military together and you know so they're ex-buddies uh, as they get on, go on to their new adventures. The one thing that I highly recommend you take a look at is the character creation character quiz. So this is a section that takes a little bit of homework and something you can do you know, in front of your computer, you do a little bit of research. But these are questions designed to get you thinking about your character and about the positioning. So it could be something like describe your character's appearance, something fairly straightforward. And then it gets into questions like what is your character's relationship with money? So someone who's uh, had a rich background or you know was well off from a family might have a very different perspective for someone else. Or in how does your character define personal growth? And these sorts of questions that we encourage everyone to fill out, even just briefly, really give you a chance to understand your character better. And they're not designed to fix you into a certain parameters that you have no room to grow, but they are designed to give you that framework to work from. So that's pretty well it for, for session zero. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty quick. Set some time with your game master and your players to get together either virtually or, or together once the pandemic's finished. Um, and sit together and talk about your character ideas to make sure that everyone's on the same page, everyone works together to create th the characters grouping, the party, the adventurers that you're gonna be working together whenever you go out onto your adventures in there. And the GM will help guide that. Uh, the GM obviously is the one running the game, but collectively the GM plus the players are gonna be able to create the parameters. They're gonna make the game good for everyone. So session zero, chapter two of character creation, always start there. And in the next series of the videos, we'll get into a little bit more game mechanic aspects. Hey, thanks for watching.